Well, Ukrainian officials dismissing a claim by the head of the Wagner private army group who had said that Russian forces hold Bakhmut in, quote, legal terms. Now, Yevgeny Prigozhin made that claim in this video, which he said showed him raising a Russian flag at the side of a council building. A Ukrainian military spokesman says the video is incomprehensible. David McKenzie joining us with the very latest. He's on the ground in Kyiv in Ukraine for you. David. Well, that's right. That video, which is, of course, uh, taken at night uh, and not exactly clear what we are seeing there, but Prigozhin claimed that they had, uh, in a legal sense, taken Bakhmut, that heavily contested city in the eastern part of the front. And now Ukrainian officials saying that's, quote, wishful thinking. They say, while it is a very difficult situation, they still control certain sections of that city. And importantly, they say they are able to get food, medicine, uh, and the wounded uh, out of that area, as well as ammunition. So, and they also point out, I think, which is important, that over many, many months, the Russians and the private military contractors have not been able to take Bakhmut. That much is clear. Uh, you know, the ongoing shelling and rocket attacks and missile attacks in the eastern part of the country and, frankly, throughout this country have had a devastating toll on soldiers and civilians alike. We got rare access inside a team of U.S. and Canadian surgeons looking to reconstruct Ukrainian faces I must warn some viewers, they could find some of these images disturbing. Left and right. The impact of war is hard to look at. Look at my finger. The difficulty that, that I'm having is that I don't know what anything looks like behind this skin here. I can make an opening that looks like there's an eye, but they're never going to look like normal eyelids. And the surgical realities are nothing like civilian life. Okay. How do you compare it to here in Ukraine? Well, the level of complexity for these cases um, is significantly uh, more elaborate and significantly more complex. Do you think we can get the mouth working better? Face the Future Mission Director Anthony Brissett says the blast injuries are often devastating. One of the things that we can do is improve the appearance mm -hmm. of the scar. Multi-level bone and soft tissue injuries. It really get, does not get any more complex than this, um, even in a combat scenario. They brought together highly specialized plastic surgeons, anesthesiologists and nurses from the U.S. and Canada to reconstruct and repair. All that bone is missing. What many cannot. And if we can do that, then that certainly is a fulfilling opportunity. So it's not just the physical change, it's a psychological help. You hope. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's a psychological help, not just for the patient, but also for their family. Roman Belinsky is one of their patients. Thank you. He's invited us to his home. What do I think of him? I'm proud of my son, says his mother, Lesia. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of the fact that he didn't run away. He didn't hide. Early in the war, his mechanized infantry brigade faced the brunt of Russia's invasion and their oncoming tanks. Are you surprised that you survived? No, no. I do not understand how I survived, he says. I don't even understand how I got through the shelling because it was dark. My eye was hanging out. I was concussed. My whole face was covered in blood. Shrapnel went right through me. He says many in his brigade were lost. We were all like one family, he says. You know, somewhere you feel your guilt that I didn't also die like they did. Roman lived. And this will be his third surgery with Dr. John Frodel. What, what bothers you the most now? Our hope is that at some point they leave happy. You know, then I don't see them again. On my end, I have to appreciate we're making steps because they, we don't fix them. We make them better. So this is where we shine, uh, which is in the operating room. All of the steps and activities that we were doing before getting here um, is really to get us to this point. Roman surgery is one of the first of the day. He says Dr. Frodel and the team have already put him back together and saved his life. 
Dr. Frodo is working to move a cheek implant just a tiny bit higher on Raman. The margins in this kind of surgery are very small, but the differences for the patients can be huge. A person's appearance is the reflection of their inner spirit, of their inner self to the world. And we must never forget that. But everyone wants to have a facial appearance that others want to look at and would want to get to know you. It's part of the human condition. I've been in touch with Dr. Frodo Becky over the next few days after that uh, surgery of Roman. He says that Roman's doing well. The swelling will eventually come down. They're coming back here in just a matter of weeks. As we say in that report there, it takes a long-term commitment. And part of the commitment is the patients themselves deciding whether they want to go on with these multiple surgeries that at times make marginal differences. But in general, they're yeah, making absolutely. a huge difference in their lives. Becky? It is, it is absolutely remarkable. Their work is to be absolutely applauded.